80% of the world population has a mobile phone. 1.8 billion people have a smartphone. 50 million people have a mobile phone, yet don't have access to electricity. And daily, 1.5 million people are activating a smartphone. Six billion people by 2020 will have a smartphone. 75 billion units will be interconnected. 85% of the new apps that have been developed for the cloud right now, and 90% of all the data that has ever been created in the world was just created 12 months, in the last 12 months. And even crazier is that 3 billion people will be on social media by 2020. Now, these are all huge numbers, gargantuan numbers, that don't necessarily mean much to everybody. But the one thing that we can all come to terms with is that things are moving excessively fast. So fast. But the one thing that we have to accept and embrace is that disruption is now at hand. Being that I'm a communications expert and that my day-to-day -day is analyzing, observing, and understanding how people exchange, share, and create information, it is undeniable that today one of the most influential tools for communication is this m marvel that we all have, this technological genius thing that we all have in our pockets, in our hands, in our purses, that we're all thinking about every 15 seconds. Now, given that this is the case, and that this was a tool that was built for communications, we have to look at how communications evolved to understand the impact of this tool. So, we first started, as men, painting on caves. Then eventually some guy decided to draw on a piece of paper. Then we sent out pigeons, then we had Pony Express, and then we went to the telegram, and then went to the phone, and then we got to the mobile phone, and then we got to the smartphone. Now this evolution of communication is intrinsically linked to the evolution of technology. Technology has always allowed us to share, create, and participate in communicating with the rest of society. But let's quantify this a little bit. 5,000 BC Persia, the first postal system, took us 2,400 and some years to get to the first phone. And then it took us 80 years and some to get to the 2.3 kilo monstrosity of a mobile phone. And then it took us 30 and some years to get to a place where Steve Jobs came up on stage and said, you will all be my slaves. This is the iPhone. <laughs> Once that happened, it took us eight years to get to this computing marvel. Now, quantifiably, we have an idea of how things are evolving and how fast they're changing. But what's more important about this is that considering that a quarter of the global population is now interconnected by this, we have to understand that this is a lot greater than just a communication tool. So for me to be able to give you an idea that is contextual, that we can all relate to, I needed to come up with a story, a universal story that we all adore. Boy meets girl. And more specifically, this boy meeting some girl. So what happens when I meet a girl? First, I have to actually physically leave my place and go to venues where social interaction is accepted with other human beings. And then at which point in time, I will identify an attractive looking female. For this conversation, for the sake of this talk, since I am a heterosexual, it's an intergender heterosexual context. So, <laughs> I then have to approach said female. This is the, you know, make it or break it. All of the guys know what this means. So, I approach that female, hello, my name is Munir. The instant fraction of a second scan, hair, shirt, tie, shoes, what's going on, blazer, okay. You know what? I'll let him speak. <laughs> At which point in time, I then make contact. And an exchange of information is starting. She starts analyzing whether or not what I'm saying is asinine or is acceptable. And then, she will then increase frequency, depth, and exchange. We start getting closer. 
At which point in time, a second meeting has been set, which is another verification, really. Because once we sit at dinner, she's like, what are those shoes? How did he speak to the waiter? And why on earth would you order dessert first? What's wrong with you, boy? <laughs> at which point in time, if I have passed all the Jedi female mind tricks that are <laughs> thrown at me, I then have to increase the frequency of communication to try and get to a place of intimacy where information and secrets and all the deepest, darkest little things that we all want to hide from each other are shared. And then at some point or another, we get to a place of further intimacy, and then the rest is history. <laughs> now, this is what the traditional method of intergender exchanges have been going on for ages, from Julius Caesar to Cleopatra to you know, every Hollywood star. But today, how does all this change? <laughs> First. <laughs> <laughs> First, I swipe left, 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 right. Match. Awesome. Talk. Hi, how are you? What are you doing? 15 minutes of superficial conversation proceeds. And then all of a sudden she says, hey, why don't we move to Facebook so I can stalk your life and figure out who your friends are, what you do, where you like, where do you go out, where exactly you went last week, and what did you wear last summer? And then all of a sudden, after that conversation is done and she's gone through the whole process of analyzing my life, she'll say, you know what? WhatsApp. So much more intimate, so much more of a connection emoticons, messages, pictures, videos, and the voice note, which I love. <laughs> and then, once all that has been established, you know what? Take my Skype handle. Then we get to video exchanges. This is where I take my coffee in the morning, and look at my little kitty. This is my bedroom. This is my view. I hate it. I can't wait to get out. You know what? Let's get out of there. Why don't we fix a trip? And then, at which point in time? Expedia, the only answer. So then we go to, okay, what is the destination? What time you want to go? Where do you want to get? Okay, perfect. Let's go. Done. We land. All of a sudden, a cab is waiting for us. Why? Because I swipe for one. And then he's there. We get into the cab. We head out to the hotel, which already, 64 people told me was awesome. Gave him five stars. Staff is very friendly. All the bars are around the place. <laughs> Not done. Got a lot more to go. And then we get to Booking.com, where I booked the loveliest little brunch place, where apparently they have a great dessert right on the water. So then we get there, have a great time, get back on the plane, go back home, and I can revisit the whole experience via Instagram. <laughs> what does all this mean? So this would have happened, say, 100 years ago, this whole scenario would have happened probably over a couple years. By the time the pigeon gets to me, I get onto a boat, we go over there, and then I, hi, yeah, okay, good. Then, 10 years ago, it would have been like, link, 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 no, that's about 20 years ago. Talk to her, meet up, and then this would have taken maybe a couple months. Today, because of this marvel and this tool, it took two people, Five days, separated by 1,648 kilometers. Basically, we achieved an amazing weekend through five days of communication. Now, can we say that we had less of a connection, more of a connection? Was it as in-depth? All we can say out of this is that two people exchanged, had a great time, enjoyed each other, and then there was an, you know, an element of exchange that happened through this tool. But what's more important about this is that this was completely disrupting the intergender exchange. The disruption that we are seeing daily because of this phone can be seen on so many other levels. This clearly collapsed time and space, and not on some physics basis where we're all going to explode tomorrow. This is something that was taken from Jason Silva, which maybe some of you have heard of. Fans. All right, great. <laughs> also a hottie with a body. Um, so what does he mean by space and time collapsing? He just means that time is no longer a factor. If I want to speak to somebody and if I want to have a communication with someone, I can do it instantly. Space. There is no such thing as distance anymore. This tool has completely changed the way that we interact with human beings and our society at large. At the end of the day, 
we are talking to a community, a massive one. Communication verification. Now, women do this constantly all the time when it comes down to the men that they're around, but now they have other ways of verifying, ways that certain intelli intelligence agencies would probably take notes off. You know, like it's, it's amazing what they find out. And then, the ease of setting it all up. All I needed was a smartphone and a couple apps, which again, we can all thank the smartphone, iPhone, genius Steve Jobs for the apps, right? He made you all slaves. Not me, Android. So, but let's look at this in another disruptive manner. How the smartphone has disrupted us in other aspects apart from intergender. Body language. Today, you can walk into a club, Ziad, sitting at a bar, talking to a friend, having a good time, having a drink. All of a sudden, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Damn right, that's awesome. Share. Yeah. What just happened? What did he just use? Shazam. Right. Shazam created a behavior. You're sitting there trying to cramp up shit. <laughs> Speaker's too high. Tall guy, come over here. <laughs> and so, these things are not only seen in terms of the applications that we're using, but because the dependency on the smartphone has become so vital and so second nature, smartphone operates on what? Electricity, unfortunately. So then you start looking at your phone, you're typing, having a good time, sharing this, sharing that, all of a sudden, what, 5%? 5%? What am I, <laughs> what am I gonna, 5%, where am I gonna, have a charge? Charge? <laughs> Android, not iPhone. <laughs> Charger. You've completely changed the way that people are now messaging things to each other. They're just like, Inter international <laughs> sign for juicing. But more importantly, this thing has connected a quarter of the population of the globe. How sad, how, that's crazy. Seth Godin says it beautifully in a book, that's the connected tribe, where he basically describes all of us being so digitally interlinked that there is no sense anymore of separation. There is, we are all one through the digital space. One of the speakers earlier today mentioned this. This is the impact of the web, really. But the interface of this tool has amplified the web. I wanted to quickly talk about the selfie. Selfie, see, all of a sudden polarized. People are like, uh, yay. <laughs> so you get polarization over a word. This was taken by Obama and also taken and created a dynasty, really, out of people that should not be a dynasty, the Kardashians. So, Woo! you know, I mean, this tool has done something that no other tool would have been able to do. Now, let's look at this picture. What do we see? People taking pictures. Good job. So, what did you say? Sorry? <laughs> Somebody said she's the only one enjoying this. Or, or present. Is there anybody in this picture who is in any way unhappy? No. Or in any way not content, not enjoying this scene? There is only one person in this whole scene that doesn't have a phone. Granny's a loser. No, she's not. She's lovely. We love her. So, but is she... Any less connected? Are they disconnected? No. Because they are so connected? Because they're sharing this scene? Questionable. What about these people? We've all done this. I don't care who you are, you've all done this. You've done this, and then it went numb, so you did this. <laughs> and not only did you do this, and you switched the arms, at which point you were like, oh my god, oh my god, battery dying dead. Charger? <laughs> like, this is... Something that we cannot deny. We are all interfacing. We're living experiences. The reality of it all is that once you put your arm up there and it's in lock position, you're not looking at the phone anymore. You're just enjoying the show. This just becomes, okay, I'm recording it to flaunt it to all my friends, be like, you suck, I was here. Ha ha. <laughs> but there is a movement, 
of people who are trying to say that this tool should not be so influential. This is, I love this. So, okay. I speak to my mom daily through this. My mom sends voice notes through this. I send selfies to my mom. But this in no way negates the fact that certain people demonize the tool. They say that we are so connected, that we are so engrossed in the screen, that we are so you know, engrossed in looking at where we're typing as opposed to where we're walking, or enjoying our surroundings as opposed to enjoying the picture that was shared, that we are disconnecting from our reality. When, as opposed to looking at it in this context, we should be looking at it in the context of grasping and embracing our reality. Technology has always been a part of our evolution. We have always evolved. When the radio came out and they were blasting the Beatles, they were like, don't listen to rocket satanic music, no, cover your ears. Then all of a sudden the TV came out and Elvis Presley was doing the hippie shake. They're like, don't look at the screen. This was a demonization of every tool of communication exchange. Every tool that came out that was at first misunderstood because it was new, novel, strange, was demonized. And the same thing is happening with the smartphone. When really, this is not something that we should demonize because connectivity is a reality. Connectivity is here to stay and not going anywhere. Disruption of our sharing of information, disruption of our connectivity is going to evolve and change to a place where eventually hyperconnectivity will be present. Our only challenge as human beings, our only challenge as society, is understanding how to better balance this hyperconnectivity and embrace the fact that this thing is here to stay. Thank you. Woo!